Hello, AI native networking platform has been something we've talked about a lot lately, but what does that mean for your user and your operator? To help us understand it all, we have brought in Bob Friday, our chief AI officer, to walk us through it. All right, Bob, first question. What role does AI play in today's networks, and how is AI able to benefit the experience of the end user? Yeah, Jessica, you know, for me, I want to relate a story from when I started Mist. I was talking to some very large retail customers, and what they were telling me was, Bob, before I put any business critical app onto this network, you have to assure me that your controllers are not going to crash, that you can basically release code more than once or twice a year, and most importantly, you have to make sure that when that user connects that they're going to have a great experience, right? And that's when I realized that really the paradigm was shifting from helping customers manage network elements to really helping them manage that cloud AI user experience. And that is the role that AI is playing in today's network, is really moving from that paradigm of managing network elements to managing the client to cloud user experience. All right, so what is the difference between AI native and AI driven? That is a great question. You know, my story was at Cisco, before I started Mist, I was talking to some very critical big retail customers, and they told me a couple of things. One is before they were going to put any business critical app on that network, like an app for their customers, they wanted to make sure that controllers were not going to crash anymore. They wanted to make sure that I could deliver code more than once or twice a year. They wanted me to keep up with their mobile app. And more importantly, they really wanted to make sure before anyone on that network that they were going to have a great experience. And that was really the paradigm shift from managing network elements like I did 20 years ago versus managing the user experience. So when you look at AI native, the decision I made was to solve that problem, I needed to leave Cisco and start with a clean sheet of paper. You know, that actually building an AI native was going to require a real-time foundation cloud solution that you were not going to get at a legacy system. And more importantly, when you put the software on the cloud, you need to build a microservices software architecture which really required that blank sheet of paper. So when you think about AI native and AI driven, AI native means a clean sheet of paper and a foundation built for real-time cloud AI performance. AI driven is basically make, taking that foundation and then delivering an AI driven experience. So with AI native, I've been hearing part of the reason Juniper AI is ahead is because it's built on the right data, the right real-time response, and the right secure infrastructure. So can you explain as to what that means? You know, because when I was at MIST, the reason I built an access point was to make sure I could get the right data to answer the question of why is a user having a poor internet experience. It's not because I thought the industry needed another access point, it's because I wanted to make sure I could get the right data. In terms of real-time response, the other reason I left Cisco to start MIST, because I knew that we had to build a cloud infrastructure, a secure cloud infrastructure, that really could handle data in real time. And when you look at what the first thing we built indoor location, we were able to take data back from the network device and actually return a location response in one second. So that's what we mean by real time data, down to second level real time data across a secure cloud infrastructure. So Juniper offers the only platform with a common microservices cloud. Why is that important for AI? And how does that help deliver an exceptional user experience? You know, as I mentioned before, when I was working with large retail customers, one of the things they asked for was for controllers to stop crashing. And that is really due to the difference of the software architecture between an on-prem solution and a cloud solution. You can't simply take software on your controller and move it to a container on cloud. That does not fundamentally change the reliability. When we move to these cloud architectures, we're moving to a microservices architecture that we can basically download and release every other week, which brings the speed of innovation. And on terms of reliability, these microservices cloud architectures reduce the blast radius. Over in the controller on-prem world, we had spaghetti code. So we're fundamentally changing the software architecture from a very spaghetti code type of environment to a much more structured cloud API environment where microservices reduce the blast radius and allows the speed of innovation. All right, so Juniper just announced two enhancements to Marvis. Why should every enterprise be leveraging Marvis Mini's technology? We're very excited about Marvis Mini's. You know, up to now, we've done a great job 
on the pre-connection experience and the post-connection user experience. What Marvis Minis really allows us to do is to start to bring data to Marvis when there are no users on your network. This will allow our customers to make sure that that network is ready to go on that first day of deployment or when that network is ready to go when they open the doors at eight o'clock. So Marvis Minis, think of it as a synthetic user that's constantly on your network, constantly making sure your network is ready for prime time. All right, so we discussed two enhancements, talking about the second one. Juniper extends Marvis to the data center. Why is this integration a game-changing innovation and what real-world benefits should IT leaders expect? Since joining Juniper in 2019, we've been on the mission here to extend Cloud AI and Marvis across the enterprise portfolio, wireless switch route. Now we're looking to extend Marvis across the different business units here and Campus Branch and Data Center is one of those integrations. And why is this important to our customers? Because we have several customers that run business critical apps like point of sale, boarding pass, out of their private data center. And when those critical business apps go down, they need to quickly figure out, is it a campus land branch problem or is it really just a data center problem? So by combining both the branch and the data center into Marvis now, we're helping our customer answer business critical application experiences. All right, so last tough question. How does the personnel change when AI is introduced? Yeah, so you look at IT departments and how they've evolved over the last 20 years. We're kind of moving from a era of CLI to dashboards, and now we're moving on to virtual assistants, LLM, and ChatGPT. So when you look at the IT personnel, as we start to introduce cloud and AI into the mix, first of all, we're starting to see IT move from CLI to becoming Python programmers, right? APIs are becoming much important. We're seeing that right now as we speak. As we move forward, we're gonna to start to see LLM, conversational interfaces become much more important for IT persons, and we're gonna see them start to interact with their networks in a much more natural way. They asked us three years ago to find this problem. We actually just found it now with a new AI model that basically is able to predict Zoom user experience and what it showed was they were basically had a misconfigured VPN gateway that was routing traffic from India to Australia, right? And so this is the power of AI, is helping IT enterprises find those needle in the haystack problems. So this is an exciting time to be back into networking again, and Cloud AI is gonna make it funner for the next decade.